ladies and gentlemen. The fourth RightCon Summit is a great opportunity to discuss with outstanding speakers about digital rights. Those rights have been neglected for too long, too often, in too many corners of the world. Even though I cannot be physically with you today in Manila, I would like to share a few thoughts which I hope will fuel your debates. First, the discussions need to be global. In today's interconnected world, data flows globally well beyond the borders of any region. To contribute to this rapid development of the digital world, discussions must also know no borders. And that's why the RightsCon Summit is so valuable. Second, the right to privacy is universal. The right to privacy is enshrined in Article 12 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It states that no one shall be subjected to arbitrary interference with his privacy. Even though the declaration dates back from a pre-internet era, it specifically referred to interferences with correspondence. Translated into the 21st century language, that means that the right to data privacy should be safeguarded. The data belongs to people, not to companies. The decision on what people want to do with their data must be theirs too. All over the world, parliaments have recently passed legislations aimed at upholding this right. This is the case in Australia, Brazil, Hong Kong, Malaysia, just to cite a few examples. Others are about to do so, the US, Japan. In Europe, we have ruled since 1995. While these legal requirements provide for different levels of protection, there clearly is some trust for more data privacy, which I warmly welcome. Southeast Asia does not want to miss the train. Why? Because it is good for citizens who increasingly become e-consumers. Because empowering them to take control over their data builds trust in digital services. Because as long as rules are easy to understand and easy to apply, what is good for consumers is good for businesses. In short, data privacy is not only a universal right, but it is an untapped source of economic growth for both developing and developed countries. While discussing the interplay between human rights and digital technologies, special attention should be given to data collected by governments. Surveillance revelations involve companies whose services we all use on a daily basis. This is unacceptable and these backdoors have to be legally restricted. Otherwise, concerns will continue to drive consumers away from digital services. Third, the internet must remain free and open. And this is fundamental. The internet was initially designed for the people, not to have anyone in control. We know how much creativity and technological development this solid basis unleashed. To perpetuate this driving force, it is our responsibility not to accept any backtracking. While electronic communications dismantle physical barriers, we must not replace them by artificial barriers. Most importantly, data needs to flow. If data doesn't flow, Neither the EU nor Southeast Asia nor any other region can embrace a digital revolution. And data revolutionizes all sectors of the economy. The agriculture by maximizing crop yields through prescriptive planting. The automotive sector by accelerating emergency responses with connected cars. The education by allowing any student to take a so-called massive open online course, manufacturing, by allowing numerous operation units located across the globe to effectively communicate with one another, health, by enabling doctors to diagnose patients in remote locations with mobile health. Again, does Southeast Asia want to miss a train? No, certainly not. In conclusion, let me be crystal clear. 
the two principles, data privacy and open internet, cannot be separated. They are closely linked. The challenges related to data processing for businesses and governmental purposes, as well as those related to data privacy for citizens, are two sides of the same coin, and they must be addressed all at once. And that brings me back to my previous point. For data to flow freely across borders, rights cannot be blocked at those same borders. If rules enhancing data protection are not put forward, obstacles to data flows will surely be erected to suit, to suit citizens' demands for privacy. We already see an increasing number of governments, Turkey, South Korea, imposing restrictions on data flows by forcing companies to store data in a country, to establish a data center or simply not to transmit any data. In my opinion, these recent developments represent sufficient incentives to speed up regulatory talks all over the world about data protection, a prerequisite for data flows. There is still room to ensure protection and security of personal data in a non-restrictive, in a non-prohibitive fashion. So let's do it. Let's enhance data privacy without jeopardizing open data flows. Let's strongly support data protection and firmly reject data protectionism. One very last point. If you want to take part in this global discussion, then make sure your country joins the negotiation of the Trade in Services Agreement because that's exactly where the future of the digital world will be discussed. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you an insightful conference. I'm looking forward to hear about the results of your discussions and let's join forces in order to turn data protection into a worldwide reality.